Shalom. Kohen Leimla Yahweh. Bahashem Yahamasha. Bahashem Gonkadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, considering the times. So this is a video I'm going to put in the description box. It's a TikTok video, <clears throat> and I'm not going to play it, but we're beyond this estimated starting point. So this has been the year, or the hopeful year, of Bible prophecies being fulfilled. The year that we had hoped for all prophecies to be fulfilled. Nevertheless, we're learning patience as we go. And patience is going to be very critical moving forward. Especially as we move into 2024. Many of the conditions have already been set up. This grid system is ready to go and ready to be revamped to make the full changeover to the new digital system. It's, my, it's not by accident. Everything is automated now from how we pay bills to receiving medical treatment to getting our vital signs monitored. So now they need to just add the finishing touches to this system. So artificial intelligence or AI is the vehicle moving the way ahead. And this is what the future has outlined for us. But the Bible says when he is about to fill his belly, then sudden destruction is going to come upon him. And I'm paraphrasing. But I'm going to copy and paste this video in the description box. So we are here and just waiting for this thing to be fully implemented. And really, it's going to take some sort of a major catastrophic event to set this off. Something that's going to be initiated or planned and orchestrated, followed by the execution from the inside. Something that's already pre-planned or prepared. So the contingency plan, the contingency plan, contingency means certain conditions must be met in order for this plan to be pulled off the shelf. Like Project Megiddo or Agenda 21, so forth and so on. And you can look these up on your on your own. Or the King Alfred plan. And it's really a spiritual name to call it the King Alfred plan. So the King of Babylon are the Luciferians that we read about in Isaiah chapter 14. But nevertheless, I just want to talk about some key things that Yahabashai is saying to us. Not what he said, because Yahabashai is with us in spirit and in truth. So he's dwelling with the hopeful elect and giving us guidance and words of encouragement and comfort as we move forward. Let's go here to the book of Luke 12. I'm not going to make this long. Let's see where I want to start at. Yeah, let's go to Luke 12. Let's go to verse 13. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother, that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, 
who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. So this, these parables and these instructions are made for us in the now. So it's like what I would call prisoner talk. Prisoners speak in code where only the elect or the circumcised ear would be able to understand the message. I mean, you can pass letters through a prison system, but the prison guards can't read and understand them. <clears throat> so what we can take from this is not being married to this system that we're in. No matter how many houses we own, no matter how many cars we drive, no matter how big our homes are or house is, Yahweh Shai is giving us insight or cheat notes, if you will, to be prepared to leave this stuff behind because it's going to vanish away. <laughs> Excuse me. Luke 12 and 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no... Luke 12 and 17. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will put down, and he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. So when we're reading this, the takeaway is not putting our heart or setting our mind on materialistic things that are temporary. So are we mentally preparing ourselves to transition into a kingdom or an inheritance of eternity? Or are we placing our bets on this shadow of a kingdom that's going to fade away? That's only a figment of our imagination. It's not real. Nothing here is authentic. Everything is, listen, artificial intelligence, GMOs, synthetic meat, fake royal kings that are not the heirs of the promise. We're under the wicked, Job 9 and 24. So Yahweh Shai is giving us the inside scoop, the little jewels, as in the words, or, or as in the Words of the beloved Elder Apostle Tahar, little golden nuggets or jewels that we can take to build up our faith moving forward. <clears throat> See, Luke 12 and 19. And I will say to my soul, so thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. <clears throat> but God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? <clears throat> See, let's read this in Matthew 6 and 19. <clears throat> Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. And whereas these do not break through nor steal, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So we're supposed to be meditating on the way ahead because our faith tells us that the Most High does not lie 
neither does he fail. So he made promises to our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his 12 sons, to be joint rulers, co-heirs with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So when you look at where the Rothschilds sit right now, and I like using them as an example, their wealth is about $700 trillion net worth. Okay, they're going to be a welfare case in the kingdom to come compared to the riches and glory and immortality promised to the sons of Jacob <coughs> of the royal house of David. A welfare case. <clears throat> Let's go here. Luke 12 and 21. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. So our true riches are the golden nuggets of wisdom. And being charitable in these times of trouble that lie ahead of us. Sharing these golden nuggets with the brotherhood, storing up treasures in the kingdom to come based on the promises that were made. Remember, the Most High cannot lie, neither can he fail. <clears throat> so we either believe or we don't. There is no gray area or sitting on the fence. Luke 12 and 22, and he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. And I'm thinking about King Saul trying to hand David a armored vest, a protection. So the house of Saul is not moving through the spirit. We have the breastplate of faith. What are you doing handing me a a item made of flesh. Egypt's chariots or horses are made of flesh when we read Isaiah chapter 30 and Isaiah chapter 31. Start with Isaiah 31. So this walk and these tribulations that are to come is going to take a spiritual covering to get through it. Not relying on walking with a bulletproof vest on. Are you kidding? And that faith is going to get us through the famines that are coming. The lack of bread. The lack of water. The lack of security and protection. So we're moving with the protection and the covering or the hedge under the Most High's promises. Fear not my little flock, or fear not my servant Jacob and ye men of Israel. So the house of Israel is going to become a protective covering for the Lord's flock, his men, <clears throat> those that are teaching in truth and sincerity. Let's go here, the verse 23. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouses nor barns, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? So the Lord has care for his elect. <laughs> Let's read it again. <clears throat> Luke 12 and 24. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you with taken thought can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? So the Lord is in control. The Lord is in control. 
And the Spirit jumped on me to think about what happened to Peter. And he was walking on the water to meet our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. He was doing fine when he kept his eye on the prize, the light, which starts with Yahweh Shai. But then the winds begin to pick up and blow, which represent tribulation, turmoil, unrest. And then the sea waves begin to roar and raise up. Nations coming against us at every angle, hunting our steps. And then Peter began to lose faith when he lost sight of our light, Yahweh Shai. He is our stability, our strength. All our help comes from the Lord, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. So when we lose faith in the angel of the Lord before us, then we lose strength and we lose sight of the kingdom to come, along with its promises. Let's go to Luke 12 and 26. If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? So it's very easy to take for granted being in this lot to have access to the gift of immortality. The promises that were given to our forefathers being fulfilled in our time, our generation, it seems and sounds far-fetched. But we're entering into a pivotal moment of the end of the age of Edom and the emergence or rebirth of the age of Jacob. So Jacob's hand is on the hill of Esau, getting ready to inherit the reward which is the king of the come, and all the goodies that come with it, the best that heart can desire or want. The Lord is going to satisfy our thirst and hunger. Let's go to verse 29. And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye doubtful mind. Peter lost faith and began to doubt. The situation looks too perilous. The time is too treacherous. Everything looks like it's closing in. The dangers just look unnegotiable or undefeatable. So we begin to question the power that we serve. Can he get us through this, but the same power that split the Red Sea and allowed our forefathers to go on dry ground is the same power that's going to deliver his elect in the last days. A grand, spectacular event or the greatest show on earth is getting ready to transpire before the face of our enemies. Is it not written, and their enemies beheld them? So the enemies are going to see the salvation of the Lord's elect of the house of Israel. The greatest show on earth. And the master orchestrating this from the Most High through Yahweh Shai. See? So this is not the time to have doubt or little faith. But we ought to be growing and increasing in our faith and patience. 
Luke 12 and 29. And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. So the sea hip is created to test the trial of our faith and our affliction. The temptation that's going to come upon the entire world in an many sense. All the inhabitants of the earth. So these are little tidbits of gold, if you will, or golden nuggets to help us get through and strengthening our spiritual mindset to prepare for the things to come, for the challenges that lie ahead. Luke 12 and 30, for all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. So we don't have to be carnal, looking to be augmented with a digital device or to be dependent on a concentration camp or an internment facility. But trust in our Lord, Yahweh, Mahashem, Yahweh Shai. See? But rather seek ye after the kingdom, Luke 12 and 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have. And give alms, provide yourselves bags, which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corruptive. So if we believe we can achieve what we can conceive, we can achieve. So if we can conceive, Yahweh Shai coming back with the host of heaven, with all power, signs, and glory, then we can obtain a similar power and glory. So that faith must be connected to the source, the author, and finisher of our faith. So we started with this doctrine, with our faith, when we believe or first believe, so we must finish what we started. Ain't no turning back now. No turning back now. <clears throat> For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if our mind is meditating on what the Most High said he would do, then we are eagerly awaiting to receive what he told us he would give us without any doubt. Readiness. Wow, what a perfect segue. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. So our light should be burning with wisdom. This is how we obtain peace of mind, stability. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for the Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them, so we're looking to sit and sup with our Lord physically in the kingdom. So if we're doing that now and being spir spiritually nourished, then we're eagerly awaiting to take that a step further. So if our faith is strong, then we believe we're going to meet our Lord and Savior in the air and that we're literally going to be able to sit in his presence. And it takes a strong leap of faith to believe this. The Most High is pouring out visions. 
Matter of fact, one of the visions I saw, we literally ascended up into the air and went into a ship. We were all celebrating and clapping and laughing, eating and drinking. So the Spirit is revealing these things that are hidden to those that don't believe, that lack faith. Are we grounded in our faith or are we going to wane or compromise that faith when things get rough? And if Luke 12 and 38, and if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. So we're standing on our watch through due diligence, not falling away or not falling off, but staying vigilant. <laughs> so this is the armor that we're maintaining about ourselves. The breastplate of faith. And matter of fact, let's go ahead and keep quoting it. Let's go ahead and get it real quick. I think it's in verse 6, chapter 6. So without this armor, we're not ready for the battle. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So we're not going to be able to buy or sell unless we get stamped, imprinted, marked, and tracked, integrated, or married unto this beast system under the global elite. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is a hierarchy of global elite that are dark spirits or left-hand side spirits, the wicked. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. This is what I was attempting to quote and butchered it. So doing the right thing and being at the assigned place at the right time. Are we going out to the highways and byways and teaching the way to salvation? Are we abstaining from abominations? Hanging out at a place where nothing but wickedness goes on, avoiding the path of the old man and following the path that Yahweh Shai took, avoiding those that cause us to go astray, separating ourselves from those that are not sanctified or cleansed by the word, not even dealing with those that are not in the truth. If we can avoid them, the best thing to do is to do just that. <laughs> but sometimes it's not possible. But I understand that sometimes we work with these people, but really the best thing to do is, uh, and I've got to use the term that Elder Apostle Gabar uses, most of us are misanthropes, which are like loners or hermits. Or we can we avoid society as much as we can other than going to work 
or buying or shopping or whatever the case may be, but not be enjoined unto them spiritually. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wow, I was in the spirit. The shield of faith. So that's going to block the temptations or the wiles of the devil. When we're hungry, cold, tired, thirsty, our faith is going to block us from succumbing to all the temptations of falling prey to being married into this system. Indebtedness, fear, so that faith is a shield or a hedge if we have faith in our Lord and Savior. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We're fighting our battles through a faithful walk, and we have the protection of the Spirit. And this is why King David didn't want to take the large body armor, because if we truly believe in the power that we serve, and we believe that he can do all things. Is that not written? I can do I can do all things through Yahushai Hamashiach, who strengthens me. So if we believe that, then we can tap into that power source that's going to get us over the hurdle through dire straits, through hard times. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Standing upon our watch with our loins girt about. So armored or geared up for the battle. And understanding the scriptures, not just memorizing precepts, but when the scriptures marinate deep within our mind, and we're prepared to block the temptations, the persecution, the demonization, because we are equipped with the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding to be able to continue to move forward and maneuver past these different snares and traps of the devil. Standing firm on our faith. Luke 12 and 38. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. So where there is no hedge, the possession is spoiled. So our hedge is under the shadow of the Almighty, under this doctrine. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Not getting ready, but be ready so we don't have to get ready. Repentance, being born again or washed by the word. Not still being in the world, hanging out with people of the world, but being separate from them. Holy. And not being defiled or having our garments defiled. By calling on Jebus, or by still living the ways of Babylon the Great and following after her customs, her rituals, her worships. 
Luke 12 and 41. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? So meat represents goodness, fatness, like the fatness or the fatness of the earth or the goodness of the promises of the kingdom. So the elect is going to inherit everything, gold, silver, land, slave labor. That's all meat or the fatness of the earth. <clears throat> Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Action, action word, doing, due diligence, laboring, pushing the plow. For righteousness sake, Luke 12 and 44, of a truth I say unto you, and he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken. See? Pre flood behavior, or following the ways of Babylon, not being separate. The Lord of that servant will come in a day. When he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. The fiery flame is the portion of the unbelievers. There's going to be a sacrifice here in Basra, Babylon, Egypt, Nineveh, Greek, Greece, Rome. Spiritually, the place of bondage, if you will. Let's close out here. Luke 12 and 47. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. If you love me, feed my lambs. Go out to the highways and byways and bid or command them to the marriage. Abstain from things that are not pleasing unto our power. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Close out here with Luke 12 and 48. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. To whom much is given, much is required. And I like what the beloved Elder Monatazot says quite often. If you know better, do better. Well, I understood the Lord's will, but I didn't do it. Because I was just too lazy or didn't feel like it. And that's not going to fly in the austere patriarch or patriarchal kingdom to come. <clears throat> under a rod of iron. Here in the daughter of Babylon, it's built on excuses, witchcraft, where everybody gets a trophy. So standards are going to be enacted and in play, moving into the kingdom under Jacob, the tabernacle of David, and under Yahawashai. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Our Lord is going to occupy the throne of his father David. So this is going to be a kingdom of standards, pristine, clean, royal, 
Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. We have the notes, the cheat sheet to move and fall back on faith and the wisdom that we have learned from studying the scriptures in spirit and in truth. So we're leaning on the rock of our salvation, Yahweh Shai. What did he do? How did he get through? What did he face? And where is he now? He is exalted and wearing a crown. So if we keep that faith and keep the charge, then we can dawn on the beautiful robes on the new bodies and eternal crowns likewise. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying our praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Kwakadash, Barakatam. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and the Bad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.